Good evening, uh, everybody, and welcome to this uh, meeting of Wirral Planning Committee. My name is Stuart Kelly. I'm the chair of the Planning Committee. This meeting will be webcast and a record retained on the council website. For people at home viewing the webcast, if you look above the meeting, you will see a resources tab. Select this and a link to the agenda will appear on the right-hand side. This will enable you to open the agenda reports as PDF. My role is to ensure that the meeting runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who are with us, there are planning officers and a highway engineer. They will present the applications and provide any technical advice that may be required. The council solicitor, who will give advice on any procedural or legal matters that may arise. There is also the clerk and IT support. The elected members will consider the applications and collectively make the decisions. Voting will be by show of hands. Each application will be introduced by the planning officers. Where there is a qualifying objection, which can either be a petition of over 25 signatures or over 15 letters of objection, I'll invite their representative to address us for five minutes. I will then invite the applicant or their agent to address us for five minutes. Statutory, local uh, consultees and war councillors may also address the committee. Once all representations have been made and following any questions or clarification from members, speakers may not participate in any debate that follows within the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members and we will then make a decision on the application. When making decisions, members must have regard for the provisions of the Planning and Compulsory Purchase Act, which requires decision makers to only have regard to material planning considerations. Members must also have regard to local planning policies and to the National Planning Policy Framework and guidance. The National Framework makes a presumption in favour of sustainable development. Paragraph 11 requires approval of development proposals that accord with an up-to-date development plan without delay unless the adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the policies in the framework taken as a whole. It's a matter for each member individually to balance any material considerations and to decide what weight to give them. Members must not predetermine any matter that comes to committee for decision. However, it is permissible for members to be predisposed toward a particular outcome with regards to an application provided they don't make up their minds on how to vote before formally considering the application details, listening to the presentations and the debate. Members must have listened to the debate and considered all the facts before deciding whether or not to move any motion. If a mind, member is minded to put a motion, it's good practice to first seek advice from officers on the wording of a motion. Members are reminded to use their microphones when speaking. Before we start, uh, members will be aware of the passing last week of Councillor Andy Corkill and Alderman Jerry Ellis. Andy in particular was a member of this committee uh, during the period of last year, uh, during our lockdown period, where we met virtually uh, online. I know that there's a deep sense of shock uh, across the council uh, and amongst members at his loss at such a young age with so much yet to contribute. I wonder if I could ask members just to stand to observe one minute silence in their memory, please. Councillor Andy Corkill and Alderman Jerry Ellis. Thank you very much. Um, 
in terms of apologies, um, uh, Kath Hudson uh, sends apologies and is deputised by Councillor Johnson. Welcome. Um, first item on the agenda then is the minutes of the previous meeting to approve the accuracy of those minute, of the meeting held on the 8th of September. I'll move those minutes. Is there a seconder? Seconded. Is that agreed? No objections, thank you. Uh, agenda item two, members' code of conduct, declarations of interest. Uh, members of the committee are asked whether they have any personal or prejudicial interest in connection with any application on the agenda, and if so, to declare them and to state the nature of the interest. Nothing there. Thank you very much. Agenda item three, then, is Pearlie Kings Drive, Coldy, um, subject to two petitions. That's the plan officer to introduce the item, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, as the Chair has mentioned, this application is before members as there are two qualifying petitions and Councillor Green has taken it out of delegation following concerns that the building will not be ancillary to the main dwelling. In addition, there are, to the 11, um, there are 11 individual objections, including one from the Coldy Society. Have slide two, please. The application site comprises of a large detached house within a generous plot um, within Coldy Conservation Area. The, the site is a Class A category building and is within Zone 1, where density for new residential development is restricted. Could I have si slide three, please? The original scheme um, proposed was for a detached dwelling on two floors with, with um, lower ground floor, floor accommodation. Can you see? Can I have slide four, please? Following negotiations with the applicant, the scheme has been amended to a two-storey building, which will, be, which will be ancillary to the main dwelling. In terms of design, the proposal hasn't significantly changed. It's still contemporary in appearance, with a flat roof and white render. The Council's Conservation Officer considers that the modern contemporary design is acceptable, and a simple approach doesn't compete with the arts and craft um, architecture of the main house. The original scheme also included a new access and the removal of a portion of the boundary wall. This element has also been omitted from this current application and the boundary wall will not be affected. In terms of objection to the proposal, concerns were raised about overlooking to the rear from the upper floor windows. This element has now been removed and as a, as a result will appear as a single storey dwelling and will not, sorry, single storey building and will not uh, result in a loss of privacy or, or daylight to the properties at the rear. Separation distances meet the council standards and they meet the amenity implications of this proposal are not considered to be are, are considered to be acceptable. There are no trees to be removed as part of the proposal as part of this proposal, and the council's tree officer has confirmed that he's got no objections. In relation to the concern that the proposal will be converted to a separate dwelling at a later date, this will require a separate the submission of a, of a new planning application and will be assessed in, in, in light of that submission should it should it term occur. In relation to the con concerns regarding the historic um, covenants, these are not a matter that can be dealt with through the planning system. Um, for these reasons, the proposal is considered to comply with both the national and local plan policy set out in the report and is therefore recommended for approval subject to the ta attached conditions set out in the report. Okay, thanks. Do we have the objector, Puzzle? If, if you could just take a seat. Um, just there. So you, you are Mr. Lean. Yes. And it does. If you if you press the button in the middle, there's sort of like a face with. Oh yes, yeah, right. Yes, I represent the Coldy Society and the Coldy Conservation Area Advisory Committee. Uh, this is... Um, Can I, if, but before you actually start, yes, that, yes. that's fine. Okay. You, you, you can introduced right, yourself, yes. so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you're here to speak in uh, objection. That's right, that's yes. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Um, uh, uh, presentations are, are limited to about five minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm following that. I'll ask if any members have any questions of clarification on what you've, uh, you've said to yeah, us. Yeah, so um, mm -hmm. you have five minutes, and I'll give you a heads up uh, when you have a minute, a minute left. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I, don't think I, need, I don't think I need five minutes, actually. I'll, I'll keep it very brief. Uh, 
this is um, a rather strange application, as has been explained by the, uh, just, just now, the, um, the, this, this was, there was three schemes. The first one was for a, a new built house in the front garden, and we objected strongly. Um, the conservation, uh, conservation officer uh, didn't approve. The planning officer, the planning case officer didn't approve. Uh, on, the, on the basis of that, the rooms were all relabeled, and the building then became ancillary rather than a separate dwelling, but nothing else was changed. Again, the conservation officer and planning officers um, weren't, um, uh, weren't in favor, uh, and we wrote in a second time. Uh, a third, the third application was for the same scheme, similar position, but reducing it in height um, and doing away with the driveway access. Um, and on the basis, as I can see, uh, basis of that, the conservation area, the co conservation officer now seems to be uh, giving approval, as is the, pl the planning case officer. Um, now, the Col de Sarty doesn't object very often. In fact, we take a fairly pragmatic uh, view of, of applications in Col de, and most most are uh, most are reasonable. People um, make a, a good effort to improve their properties, but this is generated a huge amount of public interest in Caldy, and um, hence the reason why I'm, I'm, here, to, I'm here tonight. Um, on the basis of the UDP policies in particular, uh, I disagree that um, the, the scheme complies with CH2 and CH11, as mentioned in the agenda. In the agenda. I, think it, I think the scheme drives a coach and horses through those two policies, and I think they're unacceptable on all grounds. Now, Purley is... A very large house, as you can as you can see on, on the on the first slide. Um, I, I, I live in Caldy, and I think Purley is oof, seven or eight times bigger than my house, probably a lot more when you take into account all the outbuildings around it. So it's many times bigger. So the question we should ask is, why would the applicant, who is an old friend of mine, by the way, um, why would he spend such a huge amount of money building a new house, or sorry, ancillary block, alongside his existing house? And I don't think anything that's um, come from the applicant side has satisfactorily explained that. Uh, going back to what the, the conservation area and planning officer uh, seem to be okay with, um, I think the main one is that there's no driveway or access from King's Drive. Uh, but as, as I've... Um, I've been doing this for about 20 years on the Col de Sarty, and I've been, I've been, I've been working as, a, as an architect and charter surveyor for about 40 years. I've never seen a scheme um, where you, you could do a, a constructed building like this without digging out dozens and dozens of tons of earth, um, trucks coming in. Where, where is this, how is this going to happen? Um, is, is, the, is the applicant going to allow all the trucks to drive past his front door and park in his drive? Or... More likely, is he going to be uh, taking down his front wall, removing the hedge, cutting down the trees, and allowing access from the road? And I think that is what is going to happen. Uh, if it's done on a temporary basis, perhaps with a planning condition, will it ever get reinstated? I have my doubts. I'm pretty sure I know how this is all going to work at, pan out in the future, but um, I think that is our big worry, that uh, once access from King's Drive is allowed for the construction of the house, that's it. And I think that is our, that is our main objection. I, I, I think the fairest way of dealing with this from the, from the council's perspective perhaps would be, I don't know if it's been a site visit already, but if there hasn't been, I think there should be, and I think perhaps this should be deferred, because there, I think there's a lot more that can be said on this one. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah. No, that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> thank you. Um, any members have any questions they'd like to, to put to Mr. Lee at this point? Uh, Brian, yes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I've listened carefully to what you said, and obviously one of the arguments against the application is on conservation grounds. Yes. But yeah. do you accept, bear in mind that originally the conservation officer uh, was actually opposed to the plans, but bearing in mind that they've now been amended, do you accept that they are at least better now as amended than the original plans that you were putting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, I do agree. I mean, a, a lot, I think the amendments were partly down to me. I, I did ask them, I, uh, on behalf of, uh, of Roger White, the conservation, uh, the 
um, the uh, Conservation Area Advisory Committee Chairman, uh, I, I wrote in, and um, that's one of the things I asked for. I said, it's, it's got to be reduced in height. We need to remove the driveway. We've got to. Well, there's a few, quite a few things I asked them to do. But I also asked it to be pushed further back into the plot near the house, and that wasn't done. And I think that's a, a big concern of ours still, that it's still stuck out in the front um, on this sort of rather wedge-shaped plot, having a new house in front of the existing rather nice house, I think is a, is a big problem for us. Any other questions? Uh, Paul. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, you, you said in your, in your closing remarks there that you, you would like it deferred because there's a lot more that could be said. Um, what more? Can be said. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, but I, I think if there was a, a perhaps a side visit, we could all discuss it um, in a sensible manner, you know, on site. I think that might resolve a few issues. I'm not, I couldn't, don't want to be specific, but uh, I think that would be a, a good idea. Okay. Um, could I just also ask you? So y you said that this plan. Um, has taken into consideration some of your recommendations yes, from indeed, last yeah, time. Yeah. Are you saying that if they take in all your recommendations that you wouldn't be objecting to it? Um, uh, not necessarily. <laughs> okay. I mean, I say that the, the applicant is, uh, is an old friend of mine from long ago, and um, uh, he's, he's, um, he's a builder. Um, and, uh, you know, I know how he thinks, and uh, I, I've got a good idea how this would this is, is going to turn out, but um, on purely planning grounds, uh, some of the, quite a few of the of the objections have been, have have, have been have been answered. But um, yeah, it's okay. like <laughs> it's difficult okay, to say any more than that. Thanks, Chair. Yeah. Uh, 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 Thank you. Um, relation to the temporary access for construction you're concerned about there, yes, yeah. if a condition could be put on saying that that would have to be temporary access for construction and that would have to be part of it, would that allay that particular fear of yours or well, not? Uh, well, temporary access, I think it would end up being, well, I think it would end up being permanent access, but it, it's a rather nice sandstone wall with, with uh, mature landscaped grounds behind, and I think it would... Once that's gone, it's gone, and I don't think that could be satisfactorily reinstated. There's the trees and, and hedging. Okay, there, there, there was the, the, the agenda, the, um, the, I think there was a, uh, the conservation area, or the, the tree, tree person wanted the, uh, the trees re retained, and they weren't going to be taken down. But that's on the basis that there weren't, wasn't going to be an access from, the, from King's Drive. If there is going to be an access, then I'm sure there will be trees going, and um, that's, a, that's a worry. Okay, thank, thanks for that. Uh, Mr. Lee, thank you for your presentation. Oh, thank you. Um, you. You are the only member of the public here. If, if it's more convenient to stay sat there so you can hear the debate, please, okay, please do. Yeah, as, long right. as, you, as long as you don't turn your mic back on, and, um, or in fact, if you turn your mic off and don't turn it back on to Hackloss, that would be, that would be great. Um, um, the applicant has been in contact with us by email, um, and uh, due to the ongoing public health, uh, issues doesn't wish to be amongst us in person, but has sent a, um, a statement which they would like uh, read out, and we've afforded that um, uh, service, if you like, to uh, objectors and applicants in previous meetings during the period of the, uh, the public health issue. So again, I'm going to ask uh, our solicitor to, to be the applicant uh, in this for a few moments. Seems to be giving part of my job description this chair, chair doesn't it? But um, yeah. That's fine. Um, so um, the statement is from uh, Rachel Johnston, um, who is um, an architect uh, for Ainsley Common Architects. And uh, the statement goes as follows. Um, Ainsley Gammon, or Gommon, have put together this statement as part of the application for a new amenities building within the grounds of Purley King's Drive Coldy. The proposal of this application is to create a separate building within the grounds of Purley that will offer additional amenity space to complement the main house. The revised proposals put forward to this committee have looked to address the concerns raised by objectors and have removed all elements that previously did not comply with planning policy. 
the removal of separate vehicle access and the reduction from three storeys to two, with the building being set into the ground, means that the building created has a minimal impact on the main house, with views from the ground floor level of Purley looking out over the roof of the new building. It is intended that this roof is a green roof to blend in with its surroundings and continue to create green views from Purley. The green roof will also act as a reservoir for storage of any rainwater. No trees will be removed to facilitate this development and all will be, be protected in accordance with the arboriculturalists' recommendations and any conditions attached to an approval. These trees will also help to screen the new proposal from view again, minimising any impact it may have. The simple modern design is proposed so that it, it does not detract from the architectural value of Purley. Any attempt to replicate its design or style would be to the detriment of the main house and a discreet temporary style would be a better fit into, um, into the wider mix of dwellings found in the local area. We believe that the proposal provides a high quality and ancillary building for Purley that fits into the varied architectural style of the area while also protecting and enhancing its surroundings. Uh, that's the end of the statement. And uh, I didn't time myself, Chair, but I think that's, that's within the five Push, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Push, pushing you. Luck. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So that's that's um, uh, they're the um, presentations. Um, just deal with the the issue of site visits, etc. We, we haven't altered our our position that we're, we're not undertaking committee site visits because of the potential for, for group um, group guests. In any event, site visits wouldn't be an opportunity to have a chat um, about, about an application. They would just be for us to look at, at specific uh, issues. So I'm not sure it would meet, I'm not sure even if we had a site visit, it would be satisfactory um, in, in, in your lives because we, we wouldn't be able to discuss and have a chat about what we would much prefer to see. It, it's, it's fairly clear the evolution of, the, um, of this application from a dwelling house to an ancillary to a, a smaller ancillary um, will have caused a lot of concern um, about the intentions of the, uh, of the applicants. However, the intentions of the applicants, as, as, I'm, sure, uh, as I'm sure people are aware, is not a material planning uh, application, nor is why does he want something ancillary to the building. Um, uh, the, state, the state can do many things, but it, it can't tell people what to have in their houses and what rooms to, 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 to put to, to use. Um, as I see it, the planning issue is, the key issue planning uh, wise, is whether the new building has a detrimental impact on the setting of the existing building and the wider conservation area or not. Uh, in terms of the issue about construction um, and the wall. Um, I, I think there possibly is something that we can do to control those aspects that aren't in the conditions at the moment. Uh, and I'll bring officers so that we don't talk around it because I, I see members are, 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 are troubled about, about that. Um, there is a suggestion that we can have a construction management plan agreed um, uh, in writing with the applicants and that we can remove by condition permitted development rights so far as the wall is concerned that will prevent the removal of the wall. To, can officers elaborate a bit more maybe on that for, for members? Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, we can add two more conditions. We can ask for a construction management plan which specifies where um, construction vehicles enter and leave the site, what times of the day and all night. There is a condition, on, hopefully not tonight, there is a condition on relating to um, the removal of trees, as in there should be no removal of trees, so, so that's covered. In terms of the wall, they can take the wall down without planning permission, but we can put another condition on which removes permitted or ask for the wall to be rebuilt in exactly the same place using the same, using the same materials, which I think is possible in this instance. Okay, so I think, I think that's the starting point for our discussion then. So we're open to, open to members for any, any comments? So. Yeah, um, my plan and training has always taught me that we should consider any construction of any site that, you know, there is a degree of disturbance. That, that's the, the way my training has always told me. However, it looks as though 
residents' concerns can be met by a condition, uh, as aforementioned, by the, the planning officer, which is yet another, if you like, uh, another safeguard. Uh, I note from the committee report the original application was brought in and just want to investigate the numbers of petitioners. Are they based on the application as we see now or are they based on previous uh, incarnations of this application? And I believe um, the ward councillor, well he isn't, the ward councillor isn't here, so I guess his reason for uh, bringing it to our attention has been mitigated by the issue of ancillary uh, and not a, a dwelling. Um, so it looks as though there's been a number of concessions throughout the life of this application, and my view is that um, it's probably um, it should enough to test to be tested. Um, if we were to refuse, I think it would be one on appeal personally, given the concessions that have come forward to the committee. So my view is that. Um, with this extra condition, uh, we seem to be on uh, on the, the right path. I just wonder how you enforce whether something's ancillary and someone doesn't move in uh, without you knowing, <laughs> you know. Uh, but um, I do look, I have looked around the area and there are buildings with ancillary buildings of quite, quite large sizes in their grounds. So it's not an unusual characteristic of the area. Other people have ancillary buildings. So it, with that, that final question, I'm, I'm minded at this moment until I hear otherwise to, to, to give approval. Um, thank you, Chair. If you don't mind, I'll just answer that one. Um, the, the issue on... As members know, you have to determine what's um, what's in front of you, which is for an ancillary building. You, that is covered by the description, and that's what the application is for. But for the avoidance of doubt, we've also put an, or we're suggesting an informative. Um, now, um, you know, you, you've asked the question about effectively how do we know an enforcement? Now, if it was ever to be sold separately, it comes up on a land search. So it's very, it, that, that means it's very, very clear. And um, the reason that we put, uh, we're suggesting the informative as well is so that, you know, it's not only in the line of description, but it's also on as informative that it is not a separate dwelling. And if it was ever to be sold separately, that would come up on a land search and they, they would require separate planning permission to do that. So I think it, it is controlled through, through that mechanism. Uh, I'll take uh, Mary uh, next. Thanks, Chair. It was just to follow up on, on that uh, business of the ancillary building, uh, because you did say that if, if it was ever to be sold, it would require further planning permission. Is that something that would be likely to go through? Because I'm, I'm concerned that we have this sort of one-acre rule that exists in Coldy, so we would in, in effect have two dwellings within this one acre if you're saying that that would go through as a, a separate sale. Um, for you, Chair, clearly any application, as in the one now, you have to determine on what's before you, which is for an ancillary building. Um, so were there to be um, any application in the future, um, we would need to consider that against the policies, which would include, you know, currently the one acre rule to the, um, the application be assessed against the, the UDP. But clearly then that would be a matter for, you know, um, members where it's come to, uh, to committee to determine that application. But what you have to determine now is what, what's effectively before you, which is for an ancillary building. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask more questions about that. So I, I understand from what you're saying that a future sale, and although it's an ancillary building application before us, um, are you suggesting that there is there's no sort of powers or legislation that prevents the homeowner from using it? for other purposes than ancillary. So it, it could be a dwelling for a family member. It doesn't have to necessarily go on, on, on the market, though, um, is, is the point I'm trying to get at. 
Okay, it cannot be used under the, this, this application would mean that it has to be used as an ancillary, it has to be used as part and parcel of the overall um, house. So if it was used completely separately, people coming and going separately, no connection to the main house, then that would not accord with what they've at, the, this application is for. Um, if your question is, you know, could they have, I, I don't know, could one of their family members sort of live in it separately? There, has, there would have to be some connection to the, the main house. That's where it gets into a matter of fact and degree. But the issue is it wouldn't be able to be, um, you know, it wouldn't be a separate planning unit uh, because that's not what the application is for. Um, you know, if one of their I don't know, kids was home or whatever and was to stay in it for a few days, that, that's, that is ancillary, but not if it's used permanently as, you know, and it's given as a separate address, for example. That's not what this application is for. It has to be ancillary. Oh, yeah, my, um, my, I, I mean, my question was also on that, that point. If this, because, of course, the, uh, part of the ob objections to the original were the size, and, of course, that's been taken down. So if this was classed as a dwelling, would the recommendation be the same? I can't, I can't answer that because that's not what this application is for. But by inference, you'll notice that we've changed it from what for, as it was. Um, and it was a separate dwelling. Um, through negotiation, that has been changed. So I think maybe you can read into that. But clearly, that isn't what's before us. So I, can't, I, I couldn't say to you categorically how it would be determined because that's not what we're here to do. But I'm sure you can read into the inference of to yeah. how we've got to this application. Fair enough. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, the officer has confirmed that we could introduce uh, an extra condition, which hopefully may satisfy some of the opposition. Can we be clear exactly what the wording of that condition is, please? Yeah. Sorry, he was, he was, so he gets to work on it now. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll be clear what we're voting for when, when, when we come to vote. Um, yes, yeah, sure. Shall, shall I bring in um, Sam? And then, um, and then I'll we'll come to you. Um, through you, Chair, thank you. Cass, can you help us understand a bit more about that? In terms of the, it, it seems like there's an awful lot of nuance of you know, your kids could be in it for a period of time, but not permanently. I understand a separate address, that's really clear, you know, that goes on your mail. I guess I'm trying to understand how, uh, obviously you're working on the wording, without getting into a situation of neighbours feeling like they're spying on neighbours or feeling like their neighbours are spying on them to kind of police their life. In previous experience of yours, how do you, I guess, how do you get rid of some of the nuance of that in terms of, you know, someone saying, well, this is just how we live our life. We're married, but we... You know, we live in two separate buildings or, you know, um, the family's just immediately grown and we needed extra space. I'm, I, I'm really struggling to get my head around that. Um, okay, it comes, as with all things, it's fact and degree in relation to enforcement, but it can be like things like, you know, separate council tax records, separate um, sort of um, utility bills, um, all of those sorts of issues co come into play. We tend to find as well that, um, you know, the, the sort of residents or neighbours are aware, well aware of to what the, um, you know, what the conditions are on an application and they'll, they'll tell us. If we get a complaint, we get a complaint on anything, we would always investigate. And then, you know, through that um, process, we would get to the stage of finding out, is it ancillary or is it, is it not? Um, so it does come into, it, it, it's quite hard to, sort of get into the specifics because you have to determine that on the, you know, what's happening at the time. Um, what I think members have to understand what you have been asked to do today is make a decision on this application, not, and, and the question is, is, um, is it controllable? To which my answer is yes, because under planning law, um, you know, you would be asked to determine it 
sort of effectively favourably if it's capable of being controlled by condition. Um, and then if someone doesn't comply with the condition, you can enforce against it. But the issue there is, um, is it, a, are we able to determine it as ancillary? Yes, that's what's in the description. And I've explained about you know, how the process is for that. So it does meet the planning condition tests um, in my, my view, but obviously it's a matter for members to determine the application. Yeah, Kath's, meant, Kath's covered most of the matters, just a bit of the icing on, on top of that. Um, it, it is in terms of um, if you've got a scenario where um, effectively there is, after investigation, a separate household living in the ancillary, in what we consider there to be the ancillary dwelling, or should be the ancillary dwelling, that's a breach of planning control. Um, we get information in terms of use and occupation, who's there from planning contravention notices, people have, uh, on the recipient of that has got a legal duty to fill in the information, uh, a pain of prosecution. So we have all sorts of ways and means of getting the information as to who is in the property, who's in the, um, in, in either property in a situation where we suspect there are separate households. And an enforcement notice uh, is the ultimate tool that we can use in order to, um, to deal with a, a breach of planning control. Uh, but we are sort of debating something that hasn't actually happened yet. <laughs> we, we're getting a bit one step ahead, and I, 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 would, uh, I would agree that uh, we're, if members are here to determine the application rather than any, any potential enforcement in the, in the future. Thank you. Well, I mean, the, uh, the, the applicant has brought some of this on their own head, haven't they, by, <laughs> by the original uh, uh, application clearly being a separate, a separate house and, uh, and certainly heading in that sort of direction. But, um, as was indicated, Harry, um, it's, it's moved back in the direction of, of, of ancillary. Um, did I see another hand? Let's add. Thank you, Chair. Do the planning, planning officers think that there's, um, the revised plans have a detrimental impact on the areas they stand now? Um, obviously, there has been a revision in height and, and the design, etc. So what are your views now about that potential for detrimental impact on the area? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Through you, Chair. I think I can quote from the, um, uh, the report. The Conservation Officer has been involved in, in um, helping the case offer de determine this application. They've gone, gone through a number of reiterations in terms of the scale and the size and the massing of the um, proposal. Um, we've got to a stage where it's, it's reduced in scale and height. The Conservation Officer considers that the simple form doesn't detract from the arts and crafts of... Um, that the host dwelling uh, pearly. So yes, we're satisfied that it doesn't have an impact on the setting of, of the conservation air views in, in or out. Okay, thanks for that. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let, let's, let's bite on, on something. If, if, I move, <laughs> if, I, if I move approval, okay, with the um, conditions one to um, 13 as laid out in the committee report, and the inclusion of new conditions 14 and 15, 14 which will say, Jo. <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Chair, through you, Chair. 14 will say, no development shall commence until the submission of a con construction management plan has been submitted to and agreed in writing with the local planning authority. The approved plan should be implemented in full to the satisfaction of the local planning authority. And can new condition 15 will read. Condition 15, it's a standard permitted development rights condition relating to the removal of gates, walls and fences. Um, so it will, it will say no gates, walls or fences shall uh, word, you know. yes, be permanently removed. Um, thank you. Um, oh, sorry. It's fine. <laughs> so that's a, that's a, that's a standard. Yeah. That's a standard. Sorry, Stuart. More than happy to to uh, second that proposal with what, what we've heard now. But I, I, think, I think one thing to rest assured about, I've counted 90 petitioners, three ward councillors, and I hope you're still friends with your neighbour, but you'll obviously be keeping a close eye on the development as it goes on in the future. So I don't think there's anything going to happen by stealth uh, on that site. And nothing happens by stealth in Caldy, I can assure you of that. Um, so my... My view is that we're being asked to look into the future, which isn't our role and our job, but I think we've done enough tonight to do what, you know, 
to reassure residents the best we can. So that's why I'm happy to second it. Well, are there any other contributions now we have a proposal on the floor? No? Okay. Uh, voting then will be for or against the, um, uh, the recommendation to approve. Can I see those in favour, please? So I won't bother with anything else. Member of the public, that uh, application has been approved uh, with those conditions attached. Thank you very much. Yes, I'll see you. Um, it just takes us, takes us to agenda item four, uh, which is a wind whistle five Rectory Lane has one. If we can ask the plan officers to introduce this application, please. Thank you, Chair. Through you, Chair. Could I have slide number five, please? Sorry, yes, slide number nine. I beg your pardon. This application has been referred to the Planning Committee as there are 26 individual objections and an, and an objection from the Heswell Society. The objections can be summarised as the plans are inaccurate, incorrect, the, the increase in levels has an impact on neighbouring properties through overlooking and loss of privacy from both the property and the um, patio area, disregard of, pre, the disregard of the previous scheme. The application site forms part of the garden area of number 5, Rectory Lane. Can I have slide 11, please? The dwelling has, not, has now been constructed um, and in terms of design, scale and footprint is in line with a, with a previously approved scheme that was granted planning permission last year. The difference relates to the final construction levels. Can I have slide 13, please? The dwelling as built, as built has been constructed on a higher level which has resulted in an increase in the finished floor levels, including the finished floor level of the terrace and ridge line. The last approved ridge line was 37.7 AOD, and the retrospective application has a ridge height of 38, making it approximately, approximately a, um, a metre higher. In relation to the council's interface distances between properties, and taking into account the different ridge heights, there should be a separation distance of 35 metres between this property and those properties at the rear of the site on Davenport Road. In this instance, the terrace is approximately 39 metres from the rear elevation, and I'm saying the terrace because that's the closest part to the rear, um, rear boundary rather than the house. Um, and the dwelling is 42 metres distance. The distance therefore accords with the council's interface distances. In addition, the submitted plans indicate the terrace will be in, um, encased by a privacy screen on all three sides. Furthermore, there's a condition attached, attached to secure a planting screen along the rear boundary, separating this property from number eight Davenport Road. It's therefore considered that the increase in height of approximately a metre above the previous, previous approval is not considered to have a detrimental impact on the surrounding occupiers or an impact on the visual quality of the street scene. Concerns have also been raised concerning um, the procedure and reasoning behind this application. Following an investi investigation by the Council's enforcement team, the, application was invited, the applicant was invited to submit a new application which would allow for interested parties to comment on, on the current application. This is standard procedure for planning applications that have not been built in accordance with the um, approved plan, uh, original plans or haven't complied with, with any standard condition or any st conditions. It's felt that the scheme now um, is satisfactory and for the, these reasons the application is, con is considered to comply with both relevant national and local plan policy and is recommended for approval subject to the condition, conditions that set out at the rear of the, this report and the reworded condition four on the addendum note. Okay, um, I've obviously not been informed of any um, presentations to us here because there was 27 written letters of objection. Um, I think we received a, an email, I was just checking uh, the email there. Um, he doesn't identify himself as an, an, an objector or a spokesperson for petitioners or to us, but nevertheless, the points have been laid out in the supplementary agenda for us to uh, consider. Um, I guess the key question is whether the additional height just under a metre is detrimental to amenity and whether the raised terrace um, has a, uh, an undue 
impact on the properties in Devonport Road. Um, any contributions from members on this? Just, just a question on that point, really, Chair. I mean, bearing in mind it's now, what, a metre higher than it, it was originally intended. Can I ask, through you, the officers, if the original application had to come in showing that metre, would they still be recommending approval for the application? Yeah, you mean if the original one was this one? Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I guess yeah. so, as they've recommended approval to yeah, this. Yeah. But um, I, I, think, I think that's the key, isn't it? Uh, that, that if this was the original plans, because I, I think I might say the original one was approved under delegation, it didn't come to us. I understand, so yes. Yeah, so, so from that day to this, uh, obviously people have got upset, and I suspect there's been removal of of some um, trees on the on the boundary, which has made it possibly a little bit more prominent. If I, if I could just draw members' attention to, I think it's condition four in our paperwork. Is this? condition for and uh, cross-reference that please with the supplementary uh, paperwork officers have reflected on the wording of um, condition four so far as the boundary treatments are concerned and we have a revised condition four in front of us is that has everyone got that everyone see so we're not going to be we're, effect we're effectively um, being asked to replace Condition four with a new condition four, which strikes me as a little bit more control over over the screen in there between the the, the the development site and the back of the houses in Davenport Road. Um, Harry. Yeah. Um, can you just address the the two main points from the additional letter? If they need. Did you want to be a bit more specific? Um, well, ways? just the, I mean, in case they haven't been uh, addressed before, just the two first bullet points from that additional letter. Have you not seen it? Oh. Yeah, we'll, uh, well, that was going to be one of my questions. Are there any merits in the late objection? So that could be be, be looked at now. Uh, I think that this is a, a case, isn't it, again, of, you know, someone puts a plan in and we accept it in good faith and then when they get on site maybe or things don't go according to plan, it, there's, a, there's an alteration. This is, in my view, not a major alteration to the scheme. But I don't think the de developers do themselves any favours when they get things wrong because it, it undermines the trust in the planning system uh, to a degree because, you know, we give permission of what we thought was, was it. It's come back again, which is the, obviously the right for the developer to do. And I think you may make comments on this, Chair, that removal of trees with, you know, during construction doesn't help people at all. I'm going to have to retrospectively get them to replant stuff that, that they've taken down. There are some additions to the uh, plan which are noticed, which are the side privacy screens on the, uh, the balcony, which, which uh, can sort of mitigate some of the, um, the overlooking. But again, I, I, I believe it hasn't, the, it hasn't moved so far away from the original planning permission for us to warrant uh, valid reasons for, for refusal, unless there are complete and utter overriding merits in the first question which Harry and I have asked about the, the late objection. So that's my comment, Chair. Thanks, Steve. Are we ready to... Apologies for that. I've I, um, forgotten about the late, the late, the late uh, objection. Yeah, the rear door material um, has, has been amended to zinc cladding as built, but that's, that's actually part of an amended drawing. The timber cladding has, that's been installed is specified as um, spiced oak cladding, and that, and that is correct, it is spiced oak cladding. The fence sanitation um, has also been converted to metres rather than feet. This is also submitted in the amended drawing, which is uploaded on our website yesterday. Um, the level information on the drawing is correct. As a full built, um, as built topo survey was produced to confirm ac accurate build levels. Um, in terms of the 
reduction in the height of the, the terraced area. We don't think that's necessary because it meets all our interface distances and above, so it, it is as built. Thanks, Anne. And, and in any case, as, as, as I indicated, Condition 4 will seek an extra control over the uh, boundary treatments, which would be useful. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, just basically agreeing with Steve, really. I think it, it's a bit frustrating when, we've, when we find these things because we can't really do much about it. I don't think it would have to be a, a dramatic uh, departure from the plan for us to go and um, try and get something knocked down and, and rebuilt. And for me, it's whether there's um, any ulterior motive in what's gone on here. And I can't see that there's anything to gain by this. And it probably is just on the day the contractor turned up and instead of digging his trench there, he dug it there. Um, so I don't perceive there's any, any real any real issue here, and um, I'd be happy to support um, this uh, application. Thanks, Chair. J just on that, as have they given, I may have missed it, have they given reasons for why they've overstayed? They, they, they haven't. No. They just give retrospective application sorry well it, it, the retrospective application was submitted as part of an enforcement um, inquiry so when the enforcement officer went out it was it was discovered that it actually was um, the levels were not as the original submission so they were asked to submit a new application to rectify that but there was no re no they didn't, not as far as I'm aware okay well Let's move on then. Oh, did you? Sorry. No, it's fine. Just make sure that those are included the additional. I shall. I shall. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll um, give us something to debate in terms of a motion then. I'll move um, approval of that with new condition for um, in place of the, uh, the word in, in the paperwork. Is that uh, seconded? Well, now you seconded, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Any further contributions on that? Everyone happy to vote? Okay, voting will be for or against the um, uh, motion to approve. See those in favour, please. Okay, um, for those watching online, that application has been approved. Um, we now move then to agenda item five, which is development management performance updates for planning applications scared head of the service to introduce the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, this report um, sort of got three reports uh, before you um, on sort of performance. This one is dealing with um, our performance in dealing with um, speed of planning applications. Members be aware that we are monitored on this um, nationally. So it's um, appropriate and good practice to uh, report our performance on a quarterly basis. Um, you'll see it's table, or it's paragraph 3.7 in your report has got the, uh, the performance. So um, to help you sort of track that, um, we've got performance for 2019-20 um, um, against um, where we're currently at with 2021 uh, 22. Um, the quarter two is the performance that we are reporting um, this time. So you'll see in that that we, we are actually, um, we are meeting the government's targets in speed of determining planning applications. And that is with majors within 13 weeks um, or minors and others within eight weeks. That does take account of any agreed extensions of time with the applicants. And to be fair, we do, you know, we do use that um, facility um, significantly, as do most authorities at the minute, I have to say, um, and that is allowed for within the government's uh, statistics. Um, but you'll see that we are, um, you know, we are meeting the government's targets there, um, which is uh, good news. And you'll also notice that, you know, that the workload is, or the numbers that we've determined have gone up since the last quarter. Thank you, Chair. Happy to take any questions. Okay, open to questions. I mean, clearly, as, as has been said, we are, we are, we are relying on a lot of goodwill. And, you know, from the chair, I'd like to thank, you know, applicants, whether they're 
householders just waiting those extra few weeks. We know that the department is is under pressure, uh, and other departments around the country um, are, are under pressure with applicant, uh, applications. I, I wonder if we could just say what we're doing to to try and clear some of the backlog to get us on, a, on an yeah, even. Absolutely, Chair. Um, I did raise this issue um, sort of last quarter as well um, when um, when I was reporting the performance. Um, I am pleased to report, whilst we still have a backlog, um, and the performance probably still is not where the department would like it to be um, because of the increase in work and staff resource, um, we have been actively um, seeking to improve our resources. Um, and I have had two new planners start this week, actually. Um, now, obviously, it takes a little while for them to uh, uh, sort of make an inroad into that backlog. Um, but we've got two new starters this week. And we're interviewing next week, I think, for another planning assistant. So I'm very hopeful of appointing, um, again, that level. And that's particularly important because the, the um, we have appointed two graduates or two planning assistants a few months ago. Um, but this is very much a sort of, you know, it's a, uh, investing in our, our young planners um, so that they can um, you know, grow through um, the organisation as well. Um, so we think that's uh, the appropriate way of, um, of moving forward. As I say, we're interviewing next week. Okay, that's good news. Hopefully, members get some reassurance that aware of any issues and, and taking steps to deal with them. Uh, any other questions from members? Yeah, uh, I mean, we, we did lose um, just recently, uh, Matthew Paddy Davis left, um, and obviously you're doing a fine job uh, acting up as, what's the position with that? And I can't remember whether we formally ministered a thanks to Matthew at the, the committee, uh, but I can't remember because Brian prompted me to say, Where's Matthew? And said he's left. So, uh, <laughs> so um, I just wonder where we are with that position because that's a, a key role, isn't it? Uh, very good question, Chair. And apologies for not um, not mentioning that. Um, yeah, Matthew um, has now sort of um, you know, left the organisation, um, and it may have been actually just before or just after the last committee even so I'd have to check the dates on that which is probably why we haven't um, dealt with that issue formally at committee um, Joe is acting up into that role until we can uh, formally recruit to it and um, one of the positions that I've recruited to this week is an interim to backfill for that to allow Joe the capacity to take on the full remit of that development management manager role which I think is really important that gives it the service, that management structure to um, help it build and move forward. Um, so we are addressing um, that management capacity as well. Thanks for that. Yeah, I, I think we were alerted as spokespeople to uh, the fact that Matthew was leaving. Um, and we all, uh, I on behalf of the Conservative Steve and myself, we, we all responded to uh, Alan Evans's email and, and asked for our best wishes to be forwarded on to, to Matthew uh, when he's left. It, I'm entirely remiss of me then not to bring it to the attention of, of the rest of the committee um, uh, that, that that's happened. And uh, I'm sure that all members would like us to, as a committee, as opposed to just lead members, send our best wishes to, to Matthew um, for successful future. Um, thank you. Any other questions then? Are we happy then to just formally note the uh, the report? I'll, I'll, I'll move that. Yeah. yeah. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, which moves us on then to the second of the three um, monitoring reports. This was planning appeals. Planning yeah. appeals. All right. Thank you, Chair. Um, so again, it's paragraph three point four of your report that um, sets out our performance in relation to uh, planning appeals. Um, there aren't any um, statutory national targets relating to appeals performance, but generally you'd expect um, sort of no more than about 33% of appeals um, to be allowed. Um, you'll see from the table in paragraph 3.4 that we're comfortably um, under that target. So uh, quarter one, 
Um, we won um, 11 of the 11 appeals. Quarter two, three appeals out of 12 were allowed, and they're actually referred to um, in sort of paragraph 3.5 of your report. Um, what I have asked the team to do, Chair, is at the minute, as you see from paragraph 3.5, we are reporting the appeals that the inspectorate has allowed or highlighting those. Um, what I will ensure next time is that we also highlight um, those decisions that um, are particularly successful, the ones that we think we should bring um, to you to sort of highlight um, sort of the, if you like, good decisions that the authority has had from the inspectorate. So I'll ensure that's in the, the next report as well. Happy to take any questions, Chair. Okay, I think, I think we all, I think all members get copies of appeal decisions, see them when they come through, or for me, interested in reading them. You know, I know it's not a competition or anything with the officers, but it's pleased to see some member decisions there being, being upheld by the plan inspectors. Um, so, you know, sometimes the plan is better can get things right <laughs> as, well, um, as well as wrong. Uh, are we, can, any questions on, on these uh, members or are we, uh, Andrew? Comment, just a comment really, Chair. I think it's, um, you know, it's a tribute to the planning department and to the committee as well, because it's, it's basically the scorecard, isn't it? Um, you know, where we, we, had, we did have a bad peer review, but obviously we're making good decisions. Um, and I know from feedback that I've got from the sort of the built environment industry, we're all being seen as a very fair place to, to approach the planning department. So I think it's, it's good news all around. Thanks for that feedback, so it was useful to hear uh, that sort of uh, positive news. Members content then to note the uh, performance as far as appeals go? I'll move that. I don't need someone to say second, is it? <laughs> we do that. Uh, that for, <laughs> we do that for me. Okay, that's six. That brings us on. That brings us on then. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Um, that brings us on to agenda item seven, which is our performance as far as enforcement activity is concerned. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, again, you'll note paragraph 3.3 says we've had a total of 128 new cases um, were opened. 85% um, of those reached their um, key milestone, which is set down our enforcement policy within 13 weeks. Uh, we closed 58 cases in the uh, same period. Um, we, the most of the enforcement activity is resolved through negotiation um, and that's actually how it should be in, uh, formal enforcement should be if you like the route of last resort but we will take that where where it is necessary um, the you'll also note um, that we have highlighted a couple of key successes in paragraph 3.11 um, so there's land at the corner of price street and Patton street birkenhead um, where there was an enforcement notice for uh, removal of shipping containers um, and they've now been removed and the land reinstated. Got the, oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this right, am I? Is it the Wind, Wind Tranmere? Wind Tranmere? Um, so which is a domestic property that was used as a waste transfer, transfer station. And again, that's actually been uh, fully cleared without the need for formal enforcement action. Um, there's um, the rugby club in Eastham, uh, with unauthorized adverts, um, which again has been resolved without um, enforcement action. And Wallasey uh, Cricket Club had a, a marquee um, that again has been removed without the need for, for formal action. Um, so happy chair to take any questions. Any questions? Members on, on this one. Uh, hey. Yeah, uh, well, just on that point on in uh, formal action, I noticed there was no formal action taken this quarter or the last quarter, uh, and it does say sort of as a, um, a last resort, but there are some cases, say PD Foods in Birkenhead, that have gone on for a considerable number of years. So basically, what counts as a, as a last resort in, in instances like those? Right, um, that particular case, and Matthew may be uh, better able to, to 
um, comment on that one because I think that's actually gone to the magistrates' court. Um, but the, you'll also notice members that have received notification of a couple of enforcement appeal decisions that we've had recently. Um, so when we issue um, formal action is where um, we would say we issue a formal enforcement notice. The applicant's got the right to appeal against that notice. In those cases, um, the, we've won the appeal, which means the enforcement notice still stands, which means that we can then, uh, the applicant is required to remove or cease the offending uh, works. And if they don't do it, we can prosecute in the magistrate's court and we will take that formal action. Um, but obviously it has to be on a case by case basis. So there's, no, there's nothing that prevents us from doing that. We will absolutely take that where it's the right thing to do, but we need to look at each case on its merits. And clearly, if we can resolve it without the need for enf enforcement action, then that's, that's where we want to be, because that, that will get you to the same place. You know, if there's something there that shouldn't be there and it's removed, they do it without action, then that's ideal and it saves us all a lot of um, you know, time and effort, albeit it shouldn't be there in the first place. PD foods, PD foods, which is, yeah. So, uh, members, that there is um, the, the, the case that Councillor Gordon mentioned uh, of PD foods, um, and that that's a matter in which an enforcement notice uh, was served um, in respect of um, requirement for removal of an air conditioning unit and removal of an unauthorised extension. Um, and um, that, that's not being complied with, or it certainly appears that the local authority is not being complied with, and that's um, been, uh, but that was listed with the magistrate's court yesterday, so it was a first hearing yesterday, uh, and that case has been adjourned. So, uh, but we'd like to go into any detail about that, but just factually stating what, what occurred yesterday. Um, but in, in general terms, uh, local authorities have got extensive powers in terms of enforcement. Um, and there are also powers of, uh, to injunct in, in, in extreme circumstances as well. Um, but um, as, uh, uh, as Kath mentioned, the whole basis around the national planning policy framework is um, uh, about proportionality uh, in responding to suspected breach of, contro of control in terms of resourcing. Um, and the, the emphasis is about negotiation. But you know, we're, we're always there in legal to. Uh, to, to deal with the hard cases in terms of enforcement and any further action beyond that. Yeah. I, I think I, I, I've been involved in enforcement cases in my own world. It can be frustrating. It does seem to take a, an awful long time, but it is a, a legal process. Um, so uh, we, we are assured that you know they, they follow the time scales that are, that are laid out. You know, in, in legislation, uh, which I know is frustrating for members of the public, but if they don't do it right, it's back to square one. That's that. That is also a, um, a, a problem for us. Any other questions, then, for um, Mary? Thank you, Chair. There is a review coming up here in the next couple of weeks. I take it it would be inappropriate for me to attend, despite the fact that it's my ward. Chair, through you, Chair, is that the Thornton Manor Public Inquiry? Um, well, any any member is entitled to to attend. It's an open it's an open hearing, um, so um, it's entirely appropriate for uh, and, and any member of the public can can attend. Wanted to check first. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the first the first date of that is next Tuesday. And it's listed for Tuesday to Friday uh, next week, and then Tuesday to Friday the following week. So uh, eight days. Um, so, yeah. Um, and uh, I would like to, to to comment, but you know, all the parties. Uh, there's a lot of work put into these these things, and uh, any member is welcome to to attend. Okay, everybody. I think so. In which case, then I will move. Um, that the report be noted. Uh, how can we just note that without the necessity? I think we can. That brings us to the end then of our agenda. Thank you, members, for their contributions tonight, and I'll close the meeting. <laughs>